Hello everyone and welcome to some premium action on board one from this year's uh, Afide Grand Swiss. This is the second round and it's Fabiano Caruana uh, who is the top seed of the tournament trying to break 2800 again and even though he already qualified for the candidates tournament he's just here uh, playing incredible chess. He's facing Hans Mokeniman, a uh, former 2700 player. So again former 2700 versus uh, former 2800 player and uh, it's quite uh, quite an amazing game. So let's check it out. Fabi has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to e4. Uh, for those of you who are just joining in, uh, in round one, we've shown that game on the channel. Fabi defeated Ivan Sharic, who was a brilliant attack on uh, the, uh, or rather brilliant uh, Sicilian defense on Sharic's attack with the white pieces. And Neiman defeated the uh, international master from, uh, international master from Norway, uh, Elham uh, Amar. Uh, so let's check out this round two game, e4, e5, we will have the Berlin defense, knight f3, knight to c6, bishop to b5, and knight to f6. Uh, Hans goes for the Berlin defense and he says, all right, you're the, you, you're the uh, legendary chess player Fabiana Caruana, uh, you defeat my Berlin defense. Uh, we have pawned to d3 by Fabi, bishop to c5, and now bishop captures on c6, d captures, and now pawn to h3. Uh, there are some more popular moves here like knight b to d2 in the castles, Fabi goes for pawn to h3 first, we have knight to d7, uh, you will have to defend the d5 pawn somehow, and now knight to c3, we have castles and bishop to e3, attacking the bishop here, and uh, bishop to d6 here is a new move, it's a completely new move, there are some games where rook to e8 was played, but after bishop to d6, it is now as of move 8 that we have a completely new game. So okay, Fabi uh, uh, castles, uh, we have rook to e8, and now knight to d2, the knight is now coming to c4 to put pressure on the dark square bishop on d6, we have knight to f8 by Hans, uh, knight to c4, and now knight to g6. So a bit of a horsing around right there, pawn to d4, and now bishop to e6. Uh, if you're wondering about uh, what happens if you capture, if you capture on d4, then uh, we go knight captures on d6, and after c captures, queen captures on d4, and now, okay, you can play something like f5, but now even pawn to f4, and it's uh, nothing spectacular. For example, queen to e7, now even rook a to d1, and after pawn to d5, you will get the advance the, the pawn to e5. It can be played, uh, but um, uh, Hans decides not to. He goes for bishop to e6 first, puts pressure on the knight on c4, knight captures on d6, Fabi wins the bishop pair, or rather, he already gave up his bishop, now he eliminates Hans's bishop as well, c captures, and now pawn to d5, challenging the bishop, c captures, we have knight captures, and now queen to d7. Uh, we have queen to d3 and bishop captures on d5. We have queen captures and now knight to e7, kicking away the white queen. Queen back to d3 and now pawn to d5. So Hans did pretty much everything, now he executes d5 and he's going to enjoy uh, at least an equal position. We have e captures, queen captures, offering a queen trade. And Fabi says, all right, let's trade, rook f to d1. And Hans says, sure, let's trade, but not on your, ter not on your terms, rook e to d8. He wants to uh, trade everything off on the d5 square. And now queen to e2. Fabi declines the queen trade and he now uh, brings the rook into the game. So the rook is now controlling the d file, attacking the black queen. Queen to a5 and now queen to g4. So queens will not be getting traded off, at least not right now. And... Um, uh, now, the question is, should you trade rooks? Well, uh, if you go for rook captures on d1, then rook captures on d1, you give Fabi the uh, the open d file, and if you now play queen captures on a2, you grab the rook, then queen to d7 is already winning. There is... Um... Uh, not much you can do here. The, the knight is attacked and also uh, queen to d8 will be the threat of checkmate. So you can't really defend against the both. So after queen to g4, we have queen to a6. Uh, and now we have rook captures on d8, rook captures and rook to d1. Offering a trade of the other pairs of rooks as well. And you could do this, but uh, if you go for rook captures on d1, then queen captures and let's say knight to c6, then queen to d7 is again very, very annoying. Uh, much too active for white.
So instead, Hans brings the rook back, rook to a8. Looks like a very weird uh, passive move, but you want to get your queen into the game and you don't want to hang your a7 pawn. So he has to move the queen, then he has to play something like a6 or b6, and then he will reintroduce the rook into the game. So here we have rook to d7. Of course, Fabi takes advantage of this and uh, brings his rook to a 7th rank, or as we say it, it he transforms his rook into a pig, and now knight to g6. Uh, if you defend now with rook to e8, again, uh, you will just get terribly checkmated. Rook captures, rook captures, and queen to c8 will be checkmate after the rook blocks. So instead, after rook to d7, knight to g6, and now queen to f3. Fabi now puts pressure on the f7 pawn, and also some pressure on the b7 pawn. So what can Hans do? He plays queen, captures on a2, captures the pawn, and defends the f7 pawn, and Fabi just plays pawn to b3. What are you playing now? Uh, you have to defend somehow. If you defend with the rook, if rook to f8, then bishop c5 is very annoying. So uh, Hans can't really do that. Hans plays knight to h8. Uh, he defends the f7 pawn with the knight, but now just queen captures on b7. Again, uh, putting pressure on f7, putting pressure on a7, and putting pressure on the rook on a8. So rook to e8, and now we have queen to c6, threatening all sorts of discoveries, as uh, queen captures on e8 would be uh, quite painful. So... Uh, and also if you play something like a6, if you want to also save your pawn, then rook to c7 uh, will be just winning. There's really not uh, not a good way to deal with both threats of queen captures on e8 and rook to c8. So after queen to c6, uh, Han says, all right, I have to deal with my back rank issues. I will play pawn to h6. And now Fabi claims back the material. Uh, uh, he plays a rook captures on a7. Now he's even up a pawn. Queen to b1 check by Hans, king to h2, and the rook to f8. Uh, again, defending on uh, on f7. Uh, we have queen to c4, now again putting pressure on f7, so yeah, you can't even start advancing the pawn with f5. And now rook to d8. We have pawn to b4. Fabi is up only one pawn, but he does have two connected uh, uh, pass pawns on the queen side, and b4 uh, well wins the game more often than not. Uh, rook to b8 by Hans. Situation on the clock is 17 minutes for Fabi, and only nine minutes for uh, Hans and they still have to make seven more moves to reach time control and um uh, Fabi is sort of inviting Hans to play rook to d1, but if uh, you go rook to d1 to maybe try some rook h1 action, uh, queen to c8 check, king h7, and now just queen to f5 with check. Now if you go back, then you just get checkmated, so you have to block with the knight, and then queen captures threatening rook to g7, uh, queen captures on g7 checkmate, and yes, you will give this one check, but after king g3, there's just no good uh, continuation here, so you, you will have to resign. So that's why after b4, rook back to b8 by Hans, now threat the b4 pawn and Fabi just defends it pawn to c3 we have rook back to d8 and now we have queen to a2 uh Sorry, queen to a2 by Fabi. You could also start uh, by advancing the pass b pawn, but Fabi wants to uh, minimize uh, Hans's counterplay. So Hans, of course, has to decline the trade. He is down material, and now we have pawn to b5. Fabi starts advancing his pass b pawn. Now, um, both players are now around on eight minutes on the clock, and they still have to make four more moves to reach time control. We have king to h7. Hans now prepares pawn to f5. If he can get pawn to f5, pawn to f4 in, uh, he's still in the game. Uh, Fabi plays b6 and pawn to f5 now. Who is faster? Well, Fabi plays queen to a4. Uh, you could also play b7, but then rook to b8 is very annoying. As um, it, it is winning, but still you have to you know work your way around that because uh, the a8 square is covered by by the rook and by the pawn. Uh, you, you have to play something like queen to b3, then queen to b4, trade queens, and then win the game. So. Uh, Fabi decides to trade queens right away. He plays queen to a4. We have queen to b1 by Hans and now queen to h4. So what uh, what do you do here? Well, there are simply too many threats. Uh, uh, just queen captures on h6 followed by queen captures on g7 is already unstoppable. And the rook on d8 uh, is hanging. So... Uh, the only way to defend both of these threats is to play rook to d6, uh, the defends the rook and the h6 pawn, which Hans did, uh, but now just queen to e7 by Fabi. Attacks the, the rook on d6, also attacks the, the pawn on g7. Rook to g6 was played, uh, getting the rook into the attack, but it doesn't matter. Just queen captures on e5, and he was in this position. On move 41, upon reaching time control, that Hans Moke Niemann resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. So he's now up two pawns, and there is zero 
counterplay. Uh, Hans can um, even even try here, maybe queen to f1. He can threaten checkmate, but after a simple g3, there is nothing. You cannot play f4. You can't really move the rook, otherwise you're getting checkmated. Uh, if you do nothing, b7, b8 gets a new queen into the game. So there are many many ways you can win. This doesn't that doesn't really matter all that much what you play. Even if you took this position and played it against Hans, you would uh, defeat him like 10 times, like maybe, okay, maybe nine times out of 10. That's how, how good this position is. And what does this mean for Fabiano's rating? Because, okay, he's 2786 until the next, next uh, rating list, but uh, on the live rating list, he was, uh, uh, he, he needed less than three points to reach 2800. So I will now check because they still didn't update it when I started recording. So he is now he is now on 2801. So yes, Fabi does uh, break 2800 on the live ratings, and now only Magnus Carlsen and Fabiano Coruana are rated over 2800, at least in the live ratings. We'll see if Fabiano can keep this up, uh, but he did crush everyone in the US Chess Championship. He's now on two out of two, basically punishing uh, you know the, the 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 smallest of mistakes uh he is um uh he is he's coming for for magnus once again not not for him as he's not the world champion ding liren is now world champion but maybe for his rating as magnus did lose quite a lot of rating now uh who, who knows what will happen maybe we are looking at at the at the second or third great rise of fabiano caruana where he will be the highest rated player in the world we'll see what happens uh so yeah uh, that's the game. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Not a lot you can do here. Basically, you are without a move. So, of course, Hans resigned. Uh, I would like to thank Pico Cascali, Daniel Taylor, Mark Bachemriki, uh, Grid Words, Logical Letters for iOS, and the John Gear Law Office for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.